Welcome to part three on my video series on making motion controls work in Game Builder Garage. Today we'll be touching on touch controls, which have two main nodons associated with it, touch position and if touched. These nodons are very good for just interacting with something that's on the screen and I'll explain how that works shortly. While the obvious use case is in handheld mode where you can use touch controls to move things around or touch buttons in multiple different ways, this control scheme is still completely compatible with other controllers, like a Pro Controller or Joy-Cons, etc. So you don't have to worry about whether or not someone is allowed to play it in docked mode with a capture card or not. Whenever you use touch controls, it's very, very important that you explain to the player that they need to press R3, they need to press down the stick in order to make that touch reticle appear on screen. Once it's on screen, then you can maneuver it using motion controls by moving your controller around. And this works with Joy-Cons or with a Pro Controller. Then you can click different things on screen with that trigger. Even if you're in handheld mode, remember that players aren't going to immediately think that you've enabled touch controls in a level. You need to convey that. You need to tell the player, by the way, you can touch things. Furthermore, clicking the R3 button will reset that aiming reticle. So if you find yourself in an awkward position, you can just reset where the 0, zero is for your controller. No problem. First, I'm gonna go over how these nodons work and then how you can effectively code with them, which is a little bit less obvious. The touch position nodon has no settings associated with them. Basically, whenever he is in the map, whenever you touch something, then the X and Y position of where you touch on the screen get transmitted out. And it's important to note that these are in pixel values relative to the camera. The switch outputs an image that is 1280 by 720. And so the touch position node on will give you something that's relative to the camera. It's not like an object in the game world. It is literally the pixel position of where you're touching something on the screen. He'll have a default value. This value changes while you're touching. So here, if I output the X and Y values into these number nodons, we can see that even though I'm moving my reticle around, that doesn't really have any influence on the output of this nodon. It's only when I actually click, now he gives me a number. And when I let go, that number now stays at that value. This basically remembers the last touched position. While touch position tells you where you touch, the if touch nodon tells you when you touch. If touch has a couple of settings. For output timing, on touch gives you a one just the moment that you click the button. While touched will continue to give you a one as long as you hold down. For touch where to output, anywhere will make it so that this gives you a one no matter where you touch on the screen. And touch this node on means that if you're touching where this node on is on the game screen, then it'll give you a one. To give you an example, this touch node on is set to touch this node on on touch. And so it's overlaid with this blue box in the editor, going to the counter into this number object. When I touch this blue box, which is also where the on touch node on is, then that counter increments by one. Keep in mind that it's every time you touch it. So if I hold down the button and you can see the little dot reticle there, every time I swipe past this blue box, that counter goes up instead of every time I click. While this is the case, this nodon is super convenient to set up single touchable positions in your level. That's all there is to the nodons themselves. While it's very easy to understand what they do, it's a lot harder to understand how to use them effectively. So here I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of how to use them and use their outputs in an effective way. First I'll show you how to code this big red button, which clicks every time I click on it, and I've coded it in such a way that even if the cylinder were to move around in the world, we don't really have an issue, we can keep clicking on that button. Also, it won't trigger multiple times unless you click while you're on the button itself. I'm gonna use the touch position node on, and touch position node on works really well with game screen. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna look at the size of the game screen. X is eight meters and Y is 4.5 meters. First, I need to convert the pixel position from the touch screen node on into an actual coordinate in meters in the game world. So I'm gonna take the X and Y position and scale them with a map. So here, I go from negative 640 pixels to positive 640 pixels, and I map that to negative four meters to positive four meters, which if you remember, this is the range of the size of the game screen, because I know how big the game screen is in meters. 
and I do the exact same thing with the Y axis. I want to tie the touching event to an object, specifically the red cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a location sensor node on and connect it in the frame of reference of the camera. Because remember, we need the pixel coordinates in the frame of reference of the camera and not of the game world. So now in meters, we have the XY coordinates of where you touched and the XY coordinates of the actual button itself. So now I want to find out, did you touch near the button? So first I take the X and Y coordinates of where you touched and the XY coordinates of where the button is in the frame of reference of the camera, and I take the difference, the difference in the X and the difference in the Y. Then I take X squared plus Y squared square root, because this gives me the distance between where you touched and where it is. Then I compare this distance to some threshold value. Like here, I defined a 0.5 meter radius versus the center of that cylinder. This block of code gives me a one if I touched near that cylinder. Then, if that's true, and I touched somewhere on the map, then have the desired result, which is make that number go up by one and give me a little sound effect. This is a standard configuration to tie a touching event to an object in the game world. This gives me the big red button with the functionality that I desired. Now let's say that I want to actually click and drag around this box as I desire. This has three main blocks of code. One is check if the touch is in the range of the item, then check if a touch event occurred. Third, determine where we need to move the box so it goes to where you are touching. Once that's done, we'll feed in those coordinates to move the box over there. This block of code is identical to what we did before for checking did you touch near the big red button. Only now it's did you touch near the big red block. If you are touching near the big red block and you are holding down the touch, then we're going to be moving you to that lo next location. And if not, we're gonna send you back home. Here, I'm gonna calculate the vector that goes from the anchor point of the box, the box's home point, to wherever you touched. So again, I'm using the same pair of maps to bring the coordinates of where you touched into the frame of reference of the camera in meters. And I'm using this location sensor again in the frame of reference of the camera so I can get those coordinates. And then I take the difference, the difference in the X and difference in the Y in order to determine the vector that goes from the anchor point to where you touched. Now I bring the two blocks of code together where this part determines should I move and this one tells me how to move. So I use the multiplier calculators as if statements where if we have to move, then times one. And if we don't have to move, then times zero. So if we do have to move, it's X times one, Y times one, and we go to that position. And if not, then it's X times zero, Y times zero, and we stay exactly where we are. Remember that even though I'm showing you exactly how to move around a box using touch controls, there is a hand note on. A hand note on is really designed to do this most effectively. I'm just giving you some ideas for how to exploit the touch screen. The main strength of the touch screen is that you can set the touch to trigger something completely different. Whereas a hand note on can just pick up items and put them somewhere else. A touch screen lets you activate buttons that do different things. Like for example, open a door or throw open a bridge. This is what touch controls are really the best for and it can actually give you a lot of power in puzzle levels where you want to like activate certain things in the world. You don't want to give the hand control that lets you kind of like break the puzzle by moving things around however you want, but you do want to give the player some amount of precision to click certain things in the puzzle level without worrying about having to move a person or move a UFO as a selecting tool over there. Remember that the base if touch note on is good if you're looking at a spot on the screen that's not going to change. In contrast, this setup is a lot better if you think that this target is actually going to be moving around in your level. However, what do we do if we have a level where we have a ton of spots that we want to respond to the touch screen and they can be moving around? Using this setup for every single one of them is very expensive. So what can we do? For this, we can use a tracking object because we can't use a sensor like a grab sensor to check for something being touched what we're going to do is teleport a fancy object to where we touch. That way, when we touch something on the screen, it moves there. My solution for this is every time you touch, send a fancy object to that location. 
And so whenever you touch in a given region that you want to specify, we can use a touch sensor that checks for the fancy object. And so in that way, we can check in an indirect way that you actually have clicked something inside of this box. How do we set this up? We're gonna do a very similar setup to the draggable block. I'm gonna have here a tracking sphere. So whenever you touch something, we're gonna send the sphere to that location. That sphere is gonna have a teleporter exit on it that we're going to send the fancy object to. Just like before, we're gonna get the XY position of where you touched in meters, check where the anchor point is, and take the difference in order to send the tracking sphere to wherever you touched. If we use a slow time node on, you notice that it takes some time for the tracking sphere to get to the desired location. Now, if we just bring the golf ball with us, that would be a problem because let's say I click over here and we drag the golf ball with us, then that would actually activate this touch sensor when we didn't actually click anywhere in here. So what we need to do is use a teleporter to send the golf ball to the tracking sphere when the touch position is close to the tracking ball. So we get the distance by getting a location sensor in the frame of reference of the camera that is tied to the tracking ball. And then we look at the difference of the X's and the difference in the Y's versus where we touched. Then just like before, X squared plus Y squared square root gives us the distance and then check, are we at a distance that is smaller than some threshold value? And if the tracking ball is close enough to where we touched, then activate the teleporter and send the golf ball there. If we set this threshold to be very, very small, then the ball will go to exactly where we touched very precisely. However, if we ever touch and hold, then it becomes actually very hard for that golf ball to follow us because the tracking ball is always a little bit behind where the cursor is. A larger threshold, like 0.5, will make it so that it'll track much better when we follow around. But again, this depends on what you're trying to achieve. As a last closing example, I'm gonna show you that the way that we coded everything is gonna work very robustly by attaching the camera to a person, which is gonna then move around. So here, even though I'm moving around the camera, I can still completely control these buttons and activate them. So even though I'm moving around the camera and the coordinates of everything are changing, because we coded everything to be in the frame of reference of the camera, it doesn't matter. And I can basically do whatever I want. As per usual, I'm gonna share with you the sample code so you can recreate it yourself. Woo, that's all of them. So now you're a master on tilt controls. With this knowledge, you should be comfortable making your own levels and using tilt controls and motion controls, hand controls, etc., and not feeling like you're forced to do something janky. These weird controls need to feel good. Do not use tilt controls just to shoehorn tilt controls or motion controls into your level. That's how you get a gimmicky tech demo that feels bad. The point is to find the optimal control scheme that lets you do something unique and different while still feeling good. Remember that if the player thinks, man, I really wish I had stick controls because this would be so much better with stick controls, then you probably failed to make a good control scheme. These control schemes are really powerful for doing different things, and you should be taking advantage of them when making levels in Game Builder Garage. With that, I am completely out of breath after this recording marathon. If you like this content, like and subscribe. My Discord and programmer ID, etc. that's all in the description, and I'll see you around later. Bye.